Greetings, my Bucket Pond friends and family. This is Bucket Ponds, and my name is Terry. Today we are doing the one-year update on one of our interesting jar aquariums. Now, uh, to be honest, I was about to reset this project. I was going to take a uh, bit of cloth and some tweezers and clean that algae off the glass. And, uh, you know, maybe do a water change and try to improve the look of this tank. But upon further inspection, I noticed some very interesting details about this one-year-old jar aquarium. So, uh, only a few of you watched the original setup video, but I put that in the beginning to give you an idea of what I'm talking about here. This is a simple uh, DIY lid I made for this tank using a Tupperware container with some holes punched in it. And uh, that was done to prevent uh, drain flies from getting into this project. But the lid worked out really well, and we even have some algae growing on the rim there, uh, as well as on the rim of the jar itself. Uh, there are some air holes in this lid. It's not airtight, and it was never meant to be. But yeah, the lid worked out well. And this project was originally meant to grow uh, water lettuce. But a small jar like this is just not big enough for water lettuce. Instead, we were uh, gifted, or, or we generated, a very interesting ecosystem inside of this jar. So, uh, you may have seen that little skull, that little decoration that we included in the beginning, and it's still there. But the Nutella macroalgae that I placed inside of that little skull, it never did quite uh, start growing. But, as you may know, Nutella comes equipped with uh, cyanobacteria, yes. Blue-green algae lives within uh, Nutella macroalgae. It lives on it. But in this situation, we have some blue-green algae, which has appeared on the rim of the jar and throughout the aquarium. And typically, cyanobacteria can be deadly. It can be very toxic. But the ostracods seem to be unfazed. And uh, they seem to enjoy roosting on this cyanobacteria. They may even be feeding on it, which is pretty cool. This was a bit of a surprise. Uh, now, taking a, uh, a look at the tank, um, it is very green, and it looks like we've actually created a green water ostracod culture here. Uh, not intentionally, but yeah, that's what we have ended up with. There's our little skull guy. He's still down in there. Uh, I think it looks pretty cool, partly buried in the substrate at this point. And yeah, that's pretty interesting. There is almost no traces left of the water lettuce, which is unfortunate, but again, a small jar like this is just not large enough to grow water lettuce. I should have known. But all of this algae that we have growing throughout the tank, uh, we have bacteria and maybe even fungi in here as well. It seems to have uh, really accelerated the ostracods' uh, life cycle. Their, their population is booming. Uh, they've been breeding in here. And they've been doing really well. Now, this is basically a dirted, uh, you could call it a Wallstad style jar aquarium with dirt in the bottom and sand on top of that. So there's quite a, a few loose nutrients floating around in here, which was intended to, uh, you know, spark uh, growth in the plant life. Instead, it has generated quite a few different forms of algae and bacteria and fungus. And the ostracods seem to have capitalized on that. We have a bit of stratification here, a few different layers of things that are growing on the backside of the jar aquarium. And this purple stuff here on the left, it's particularly interesting to me. I would assume that's a bacteria, but I don't really know, to be honest. It looks very interesting, but the ostracods seem to uh, be attracted to it as well. Ultimately, uh, either this tank is not as toxic as it appears, for the ostracods are very durable creatures. Uh, but here we have some of that purple material uh, that's not quite pressed up against the glass. It's growing up near the glass, and that leaves just enough room for the ostracods to get in there. And there is a, like an air pocket, or it's underwater, of course, but there's like a open area here. And the ostracods are frequently visiting this area. I don't quite know why. They're attracted to this region for some reason, and uh, this side typically faces the sun in the windowsill here, so maybe that might have something to do with it. 
Ostracods are attracted to light, so it makes sense that they would visit this area more often than other parts of the aquarium. But it's very interesting to see all this action. Uh, now rotating the tank a bit more, uh, we do have some spike brush in here. Honestly, uh, last year I cannot remember if I intentionally planted the spike rush or if it just came in with some of the water lettuce. Uh, but spike rush is a bit like a grass. It's a sedge plant, actually. But uh, it has an underwater aquatic form. And that's it right there. It forms uh, a sort of knot uh, with a few roots that shoot off and then tons of these green spikes, which are basically its leaves. And uh, spike brush is a very durable plant. It's uh, it's really cool, actually. <laughs> and it was very hard for me to identify a few years ago when we first found it. But it's pretty hardy, and it's not growing too densely here. But it is growing, and uh, it's still alive. That's pretty pretty cool. So this tank does look a bit murky, a bit messy. But we have created a very interesting ecosystem. And as it turns out, ostracods are incredibly easy to raise. Now, I'm just like you guys. I have cultured many different creatures, many different uh, forms of microfauna. And the ostracods seem to be ultimately the easiest ones to take care of. They require very little maintenance, and I do not feed this tank very often. Now, uh, when I'm not filming, <laughs> uh, a few days ago I happened to see a couple of our beloved boogie worms in here, the large underwater earthworms uh, that are known to stick their tail out of the soil and to wave it back and forth. And uh, they consume, you know, detritus and dirt on the bottom of the tank. But uh, all of the rotating and, uh, you know, messing with the tank as I'm filming, it seems to have spooked them, and I could not get a glimpse of them, unfortunately. Uh, but while uh, looking at the substrate and trying to find one of our larger worms, I did see some other interesting creatures in here, which were a bit of a surprise. I also fed this tank right about here, just a moment before filming this clip. I crushed up a slice of cucumber, and I, I placed another slice <laughs> up near the surface and allowed it to float. Uh, but the crushed pieces did sink, and this caused a immediate response from the ostracods and all of this action you can see them there but all of this action seems to have uh, caught the attention of another one of our uh, pet species in this tank and that is a snail leech yeah uh, there are no snails in this aquarium which is pretty interesting to me anyway <laughs> uh, but this leech here has done quite well for itself it's been in here for over a year and there appear to be a uh, quite a few of them, mostly buried down in the substrate. Uh, but this action among the ostracods seems to have stirred it up. And <laughs> yeah, it's acting strange. As the ostracods try to land on it, the, the leech appears to be frustrated and uh, trying to shake them off. Now, they don't, of course, have the, uh, the, the brain matter, the, the intelligence to become frustrated. But the response is the same. You know, the ostracods land on the leech. It twitches and tries to shake them off. Uh, but up here near the surface, this is one of the floating pieces of cucumber that I have included in the feeding right here, just a moment or two before this clip. And uh, the ostracod response was amazing. Just look at them. There are hundreds of them up here on this slice of cucumber. This is within maybe five minutes of adding the cucumber to the aquarium. And uh, just to see so many of them responding so quickly to this food, I find that very interesting. And I wonder that, you know, over the course of the year, uh, over the years to come, I wonder if we can create like a, a specialized form of ostracods, if we can encourage evolution. I know that sounds a bit strange, uh, but this is an isolated breeding population. And they are facing pressures from their environment within the aquarium, uh, mainly beating <laughs> mainly being my uh, my uh, slow feeding schedule. I have not been feeding this jar as often as I feed some of the others. And that has me thinking, like, maybe we can breed up a uh, more voracious version of an ostracod, something that will go after food more readily. And, again, it would probably take longer than a year. It would take quite a few generations for any noticeable change to occur. But over time, I think that we can 
encourage our ostracods to be more voracious, more predatory, or at least uh, more active when searching for food. Uh, now, that's not to discredit all of the algae and fungus in here that is growing that these, al that these uh, ostracods are feeding on, but I have some wild ideas like this, and I think it's really cool to just, you know, roll with it and see what might happen. And here's another look at that cyanobacteria, and there's another leech up here adventuring among the ostracods. Um, I did not expect to see them interacting like this, and if you're wondering what that leech has been feeding on, for over a year, I can pretty much guarantee that he's feeding on the larger earthworms. There are only a couple that I've seen in here, and they are very skittish. But uh, that's the only source of food for that leech in this tank, and that's pretty interesting. I'll try to catch some clips uh, of the uh, larger earthworms as we go. But for now, guys, this is Bucket Ponds. My name is Terry, and this is a one-year update on our DIY Jar Aquarium. It looked a, a bit murky from the <laughs> from the outset, but never judge a tank by its cover. This is actually a beautiful, functional ecosystem. Please like, subscribe, and join the family, guys. I love to have you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon with the next video.